Um, I'm going to kind of title this last chapter and, and Dynamic Programming and Optimal Control um, because it's, um, it's sort of the um, the topic, I mean Optimal Control is um, is is connected is is tightly you know, connected with um, with uh, dynamical systems. So the idea that uh, that lies behind this, before I go into the de details, is um, you are having sort of a system that evolves, you know, without any external kind of contribution from from you or from you know from uh, so in, it evolves, you know, intrinsically it evolves with respect to time. So it evolves some, according to some dynamics. Um, and also it evolves kind of deterministically. So you start with an initial condition. If you know a condition of, this, of the system at some initial time, then it evolves in a, in a deterministic fashion that is at any at any subsequent time, it's going to have a unique fashion. The evolution is unique. Okay, so there's nothing random, nothing um, that can happen in between. It's a very deterministic uh, process. So starting with an initial condition, well, after like one year or after a certain period of time, it's going to do whatever it's doing, right? Without any external. Uh, contribution. But sometimes what you'd like to do is you'd like to actually um, intervene in that dynamics so that you, you achieve some desired um, um, effect or some you, you want to reach say a certain point with your with your system. Um, so not just let it flow free but you'd like to kind of restrict uh, or apply certain, certain. Um, you want to intervene so that uh, it reaches a certain endpoint. Or another situation is when you want to kind of um, reach a certain point in a, in a minimum time. For instance, that's a time optimal control. Um, or that I mean, examples go on and on. You want to drive your car with the minimum amount of gas to reach a certain destination. Um, I think more and more of those situations now when I drive, like how can you uh, apply less, uh, you know, acceleration and um, so to, to save gas or something like this. Um, anyway, so the, this is just sort of a very quick introduction in, the, in, that, um, in that field, which is uh, very important and very uh, evolved. Um, now, dynamic programming is sort of um, kind of kind of gives you the a bridge between uh, what we've talked so far and this this optimal control. So, I want to spend a few um, a little bit talking about uh, dynamic programming. So in dynamic programming, um, the value function plays a key role. And by value function, just think about uh, starting with a variational problem. So we want to minimize some a 
I'm going to switch a little bit the um, um, the notation. I think from let me see. I want to I want to switch to. That's okay. I'm going to I'm going to stay with the u, but I'm going to switch the uh, independent variable to being t. So when we talk about a, a variational problem and we want to minimize the functional over a certain admissible set of paths, and we say we find that minimum to be achieved at an optimal solution, u star, right? So u star is an optimal solution. And i of u star is the optimal value, right? So you plug in the, the uh, uh, like you did, I think, in your homework. You you find the optimal solution. Uh, then you have to plug in the actually functional and get the optimal value, the minimum value, right? That'd be the solution to this uh, variational problem. So what turns out um, that plays a, uh, an important role is um, the value of the following related minimization problem. It will be uh, minimizing integral from little t to capital T. Okay, so I want to remind you, this would be from 0 to capital T of some functional f of e t, u of t, u prime of t, dt. Okay. So if you now, uh, if you, if you now uh, consider the, the related minimization problem, from little t to capital T, f of s, u of s, u prime of s, ds, subject to the following uh, restrictions. So the the final, the endpoint of u of t is the same. I think I should use capital B just to be like the book. Um, and the initial point in this optimization problem would be at time little t, and that's equal to x. So what is this? How does this look in the, on a picture? Well, let's let's say we're starting at um, a, and we want to end up at b, and we have a end point we're, we're trying to reach here. So instead of considering the path from A to B, just think of the path from an intermediate point T, which is fixed, at some value x here, and we'd like to find the optimal. The optimal path and the corresponding value. All right, so that's called the, the uh, uh, value function of that minimization problem, because it kind of encodes the optimal value um, of all such related uh, optimization problems, where you can vary t between a and b, and you can vary x. X, I think, you can vary anywhere can be anywhere, okay? And the question is, what is the minimum cost, you know, what is the minimum action, or what do you want to call it, like cost, sometimes think about it as a cost, to reach from this point, at this time t, to the final destination, okay?
Now, normally it doesn't really take even care uh, of what happened pr uh, prior to that, right? So, I mean, how is this related to the original problem? Well, the original problem may, may have, the optimal may actually look like this, right? When you start from little a to, uh, from, from uh, little a to, let's say, a, a, and b, b, right? So you will say, well, so why do we consider this extra problems where x is some fixed value here and t is any number between a and b? And we, why, why do we care about the optimal path between these two points when our optimal um, for the original problem is may not have nothing to do with this point, right? Well. <laughs> um, it turns out, and this is this is again some not some well, I want to say discovery a principle. <clears throat> um, discovered by uh, Richard Bellman, which says the following thing. So the fundamental principle of uh, dynamic programming is the following. If you start at some point A and you want to reach to some point B, Okay. And we have some intermediate value. Then the optimal path will actually be so just take a path here, okay? The we're talking about continuous paths. So it's going to have a value at this intermediate point, right? This path. So, at an optimal path from A to B for the original problem, the claim is that um, So T fixed. U star restricted to the interval T B is optimal for uh, S of T and U star of T. So why is that? Let's say you've, so this, this should be u star of t. So let's say that you're actually going, you've figured in which direction to go from a up to some time t. Okay? Then, and that's optimal up to that, well, it's sort of optimal up to that point. Then, to get an optimal over the whole interval A to B, you would have to go along an optimal path for this time interval only. Okay? Why, why is that? Well, think about going in a different direction, different uh, path, along a different path. If the total action of the total cost 
can be split in between the cost on this segment and the cost on this segment. And the cost along the first segment is the same. Right? When is the total cost going to be minimized? When the second portion is going to be minimized. Right? So in other words, if you, if you don't choose an optimal path along this part, then the whole thing is not going to be optimal. So dynamic programming has to do with this fact that, that if you somehow know that you are actually optimal up to a certain point, then to continue, you have to continue on an optimal path from that point on, as if it didn't matter what you did before. Okay? So in that sense is the name opt uh, dynamic programming. You always kind of do it from the, the time when, you know, the, the, the moment you've, you've uh, uh, trying to optimize, you know, if you do this uh, like through an iteration, if you've finished, you know, if you're at, at, at a fifth iteration, how do you go to the sixth iteration? Well, you go in the direction that would be optimal as if you were from the beginning. Makes, I mean, it just, just makes sense. I mean, there's, this is not like a, it's just a principle, right? Okay, so how do we write this in a sort of more mathematical form to say that this is optimal for that related problem? Um, well, here's one way to do this. So it would be to say that S at Let's talk about the first point, right? So that's the, f the this is the the op this is the optimal value of the initial problem, right? You start an initial point and you, you target the, the final point. Then this would be minimum over all x. of the integral from a to t of this f of s little s u of s u prime of s ds plus the optimal or the value function from t and x on. And the minimum is over all, I'm sorry, this is wrong, this is wrong. This is minimum, and what are the minimum here? The minimum is over all u of a is a, and u of t is x. So once again, why is this? Why is this the case? Think about um, starting at A, ending at B, and some intermediate T. Remember, T is fixed here, so A, B. Well, you can actually go now from A to B through multiple paths, right? So this would be X1, this would be X2, and so forth. Right? You could go through multiple paths, right? Well, they all are going to take some value at t. Right? So let's say it's going to take x1 here, x2, x3, and so forth. Well, what's that expression? The first expression says the minimum cost that um, is going to be achieved from going from this point up to this point, right? Once you fix an x, let's say on x1, plus the minimum 
that's going to take from the, the optimal path from this point to this point. Okay? Then that sum is going to be actually minimized over all x. That's going to be giving you the um, optimal path for the entire problem. Now, you can actually split this into more. You can actually split into uh, not, not just an intermediate point, but five intermediate points. And you're going you're gonna to be able to say the same thing between each, you know, each step, from the first one to go to the next step, and so forth. And that's actually used in discrete, optim discrete pro linear, uh, dynamic programming, which there are a few examples in the book. Um, of how to do. Basically, it's if you're, you know, if you don't have a continuous system like this, but just a discrete system at time t1, t2, t3, t4, and so forth. Then, and you've, you've, you want, you're interested in finding the optimal from A to B, right? Then, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to minimize. Um, the sum of the value function between any two consecutive ones. Right? So in the discrete case, if I have some t naught t n, for instance, t1, t2, tj, and tj plus 1. And you start at this point. Then how are you going to go from tj to tj plus 1? Well, you're going to go to all possible values at state t, tj, and then you're going to optimize to the next one. You're going to find the optimal path for the next one. Right? Then the same with the with all values. Right? And then among all of those you're going to minimize. You're going to say which one is the minimum among all of them. And that's the one you're going to pick to move to the next one. Okay? So that's how you kind of uh, recursively go go and find um, uh, the the optimal path for the whole for the whole interval. So in the in the discrete case, <coughs> let me just write it here the the s t j plus one at a value x uh, at a value y is the minimum x belongs to aj of s tjx plus a constant um, plus excuse me plus the cost going from x to y in the j iteration so, and you minimize over all possible x. So it could be the only discrete number of, value of values of x at each state. Okay. In the continuous case, it's the x is continuous and also the t is continuous. But here it could be discrete. But again, it's the same, the same principle. So what, what is this buying us? What is this thing telling us here? So I'm, I'm, I'm only going to talk about the continuous case because, um, because we want to relate it to the optimal control. Well, 
turns out that uh, so back to continuous dynamic programming um, you can actually now rewrite this whole thing of the value function not at, a, at the initial point a, a in capital A, but at any point x, t and x um, the same way, so it's minimizing s of t prime and um, y and we minimize over y and now minimizing the integral from t to t prime of course this is the same f and the minimization is over u of t equals x and u of t prime equals y so the picture here would be just now we start at t and we end up at b so we take an intermediate t prime and the initial point is tx I want to get to b and b so the picture is the same you, you fix an intermediate point t prime between t and b and you write that principle you say that the minimum the minimum value that's achieved from here to there it's the sum of the minimum values from here to here and from here to there minimized overall possible so t prime y would be this okay the reason you do this uh, is to uh, get the following um, relation so I'm not gonna uh, go through all the computation because it's in the book uh, you can follow but s of tx satisfies the equation so using this just this uh, this simple I mean simple principle uh, satisfies the following equation Uh, is that the partial of s with respect to t so t is the value of the independent variable plus minimum of f of t x and y plus y partial of s with respect to x of t x equals zero and the minimum is overall wise okay so how do you actually um, get to, to this from the uh, relation above well, it's pretty much you write this partial with respect to s with respect to, to t as being the difference. Um, so, partial of s with respect to t is the same as the difference of s of t prime x minus s of t over t prime minus t. And then let, or this is as the limit as t prime goes to t okay so you use this picture here where t prime is very close to t and actually tends to t and this difference appears from the um, 
you know, subtracting basically s of t prime x from these two, uh, and then dividing by t prime minus t. So I, I just want to concentrate a little bit on this uh, on this equation, which looks complicated, and it actually it is. Um, and not only because you have partial derivatives, so that's a partial differential equation, but it's also it has this minimization problem in, inside of it, right? But the thing to kind of realize is you minimize with respect to y, and y only shows up here, okay? So for instance, think about f, that's the integrand, as being a convex function. It's like um, y squared. So, um, by the way, this is called the Hamilton Jacob uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation. And it's it's depending on what f is. I mean, it, it can be very complicated. But just think of um, if f is some um, some function. of t and x plus, let's say, one-half y squared. And let's think of one variable, so just y squared. Convex in y. Remember, that's kind of a, almost like a prerequisite for getting unique solutions. or getting sufficient conditions that the euler lagrange equation gives you a minimizer, is that it has to be convex in y, right? So then just look at that, minimiz uh, that problem there. So that's minimizing with respect to y. And I have, this is independent of y, right? This is 1 half y squared, and that's y times something independent of y. So what does that give you? You just have to differentiate. It's a quadratic in y, right? So it would be, and it's a quadratic with a with a con, concave up, right? Because it's plus one half y squared. So to find the minimum, so maybe I should say is achieved when uh, y plus partial of s with respect to x equals zero. Yeah, because you take the derivative with respect to y, and this is just y from here, and this is just the constant in front of y. And this this term has nothing. So y plus s is zero, so it means that y is minus partial of with respect to x at t and x, and that has to go back into the um, into this expression. So it's going to be the Hamilton-Jacobi equation looks like partial with respect to s plus you know f1 of t and x plus one half y squared, right? So that's partial of s with respect to x squared minus y times partial of s minus partial of s with respect to x squared equals zero. Let me suppress the TNX so you see it clearly here. 
So that's partial with respect to S uh, with T of S minus one half partial of S with respect to X squared plus F1 of T and X equals zero. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, so that gets rid of that minimization problem. Okay. So if 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 um, if your optimization has has the derivative u prime as a square and just just pure square, then this is the equation that S satisfies. Well, this is still complicated, uh, partial differential equation. So in general, it cannot really be solved um, but the important thing is that it the solution, so S, you know, in particular gives you basically the minimization of the original problem at this initial point. Okay? And of course, at the final point is zero, right? The final point, you know, we're, if you're already at the final point, then what's the minim, minimum um, or optimal path to get to the same point? Zero, right? So integrate, integrate over zero. I mean, there's even if f1, if, even if there is no uh, component of, of t and x or t and u, I should have I should have had t and u there. Um, no, t and x, t and x. If you if you don't have if you don't have this component, it's, it's still partial of s with respect to t equals one half partial of s with respect to x squared. So if f1 is zero, then you have partial of s with respect to t equals one half partial of s with respect to x squared is um, has solution uh, s of t and x is um, b minus x squared over t minus t. So in this case, s of a and a, which is the minimum, would be b minus a squared over t minus a, for instance. Actually, this this should be a little b. Okay, so this number is actually what you would get when you plug in the optimal solution for which problem? Minimizing integral of u prime squared. Subject to two fixed constraints, so that would be the straight line that goes between these two values, right? And this is sort of the expression when you differentiate that uh, integrate between a and b. So I mean, you wouldn't say that this is. 
this is how you would really uh, compute the value function or the minim minimizing this this uh, functional with this constraints can be done kind of directly and get the value function from there rather than use this uh, complicated Hamilton Jacobi equations but nevertheless this principle so it's not practical in the sense that it, it actually gives you the value function but the, the value function is, is important because um, in, in, uh, in, in the optimal control problems we'll talk about next uh, it shows up okay and this dynamic pro programming principle is I think it's uh, not as practical I mean for practical applications of uh, finding the uh, you know the optimal solutions for variational problems as it is for discrete problems so for discrete problems is uh, it's kind of it's uh, almost um, competing with the other uh, you know search methods of finding minimum um, except the formulation is a little bit different I mean in, you know, in dynamic programming you have initial state even for a discrete system and you have a final state and you're going through intermediate steps so that every time you are at a current location and look for the next one you do it in an optimal fashion it is, you kind of break it down to, to intermediate steps okay so that's uh, I don't know that's sort of it might seem like more complicated than we need but um, I'm hoping that I can I can convince you um, that it's useful in optimal control so in optimal control we're already going to enlarge the um, set of problems we're going to be uh, trying to, to uh, optimize so what you saw above was just minimization right of some functional so it's, it was a classical variation calculus of variation problem right it was just kind of ref reformulating in this in this fashion an optimal control as I said we would like to x will be the state variables and it could actually be you know multi-dimensional I mean you could have a, uh, a system that is described by um, n, n uh, variables and t is time so this is going to be the dynamics uh, dynamics of the system and we're going to assume that it satisfies a differential equation so differential equation by that we mean um, the derivative so at each moment of time the rate of change of, of each variable is a function of the current state of the variable and possibly of the time when the change is happening okay, that would be just a, a simple differential equation but in addition to that we're gonna we're gonna allow for sort of external forcing or external external control so where where u is u is u of t is the control variable and then uh, the, the control may also be multidimensional. Okay, I'll give you examples in a second. 
Now, it is possible that you can prescribe the control. So you can actually say, before the motion even starts, before the process even starts, you can say, I'm going to set u to be t squared. So I'm going to, you can prescribe that, uh, sort of the, the control, and then the dynamics is going to be obeying exactly that, ex that equation, right? Or in other situations, this control at time t is actually determined by the location. It would be sort of a feedback control. It would be a function of what x is determines what u is at that time. That's a more complicated situation, of course, um, but it's, it's, a, it's also a more realistic one. I mean, in, uh, in applications. Well, so how do, you, how do we choose u? Well, normally, we want to optimize or you know, minimize a certain functional. So the functional will be again sort of a cost that you assign for for each path now notice that here x depends on t so x is no longer the independent variable so t is going to be the dependent variable in this chapter and think a bit as time and um, and uh, the cost is determined by possibly the time when it's computed the location where the system is and the control at that time and this expression Okay. So, how is this different from uh, just a classical variational problem? Well, it is different because, and I wish I had this on both on the same screen, because you're actually minimizing. You're having your your functional depends on. I mean, possibly has x and u in it. Right? U, a certain U determines the dynamics of X, right? So U controls X, right? But X is back into this functional. So if you, if you have a, a kind of a priori way of, of choosing U, in fact, to be very honest, I don't quite like this dependence on x in the functional because in the end it's u not u just this u that says how the system is going to move how is the system is going to uh, uh, evolve and that x coming from the system and the u that you've or you've picked determines the value of the functional so here, x and u are not independent. You decide on what, what control to, to, to apply. x obeys the rule, right? And the, func the, the function, the integrand, is a function of that x and the u, and that gives you the, the, um, the functional. So the, the goal, minimize. I over all admissible controls U. Now notice I, I haven't specified what the admissible controls are. Sometimes we'll have restrictions on the control, sometimes we won't. Okay. So does everybody appreciate that we've actually 
change a little bit from the scenario of calculus of, of, of the classical variational problems. Because now we have a differential, we have we have a differential equation that needs to be satisfied. So we have a sort of a dynamic system that is controlled, and this just measures in some fashion are we doing it in an optimal fashion. This describes in what sense we're looking at an optimal control. Well, first, note that variational problems are a special case of this optimal control. And that, so what's a variational problem? Variational problem says minimize an integral where I have t x of t and x prime of t over admissible admissible paths, right? So, but we don't have any differential equation. We don't have, we don't say how, you know, we don't think of this as control, of as controlling x. But in fact it does. x prime controls x. If I call this to be u, then I can say that x prime equals u. This is the dynamical system. And u controls, so how, what, does it, what does this mean? This means that x of t is the integral of u of t, right? So if you decide on what control you should, you should uh, use, then x has to obey that relation. And then I can just put that u here and that x here, and then it's, it's a control problem, right? What's the, I mean, what's the, uh, the big kind of advantage of going to that next step of, of thinking of optimal control problems is we no longer, I mean, this would be a restricted set of, 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 of problems, right? Where we think of this as admissible paths and we optimize along admissible paths. In the optimal control problems, we optimize along, uh, over all possible admissible controls, okay? And the and, and each control is actually each function u is actually gonna determine what x will look like. Okay, and let me just uh, kind of formulate. So, an example of an optimal control problem would be. Let's say i of u is the integral from 0 to 1 u of t squared, where x prime of t is u of t plus, I'm sorry, is a constant x of t plus u of t. and x of 0 is 1. So just think about what does this say, and, and we're going to stop here. <clears throat> what is this problem saying? Minimize this. So that's minimize. That, this is a control problem. Um, sorry about that. This would be too trivial. X of 1 is... X of 1 is 0. Okay. This, this is... So 0 to 1, this is X, right? 
So you're trying to get from this point to this point along a path. But now the path has to obey this law, this, this law right? Well, what do you see here? To, the minimum most of the function would be if u were 0. Right? But if u is 0, the corresponding x will never get from here to here. Why? Because, well, you have to know how to solve x prime equals ax. x is constant e to the at, right? So it would be a peaceable exponential. The exponential will never get to zero, right? So without any external control, this system would never go to zero, starting at one. Yeah? So you have some non-zero. You have to impose some non-zero control. Well, the moment you impose a non-zero control, that function will be positive, strictly positive, right? So the question is, What's the smallest quantity, like integral of u squared, that you have to apply to drive this, according to this equation, to zero? You're saying a has to be positive? Um, positive or negative? If it's negative. If it's negative, no. No. You cannot, either way, you cannot go to zero. Exponentials never go to zero unless they start at zero. Okay? So that's the, the question is, how and what is, you know, what U forces X to go in this trajectory? But whatever u you find that minimizes that and such a corresponding x satisfies this both is going to be the optimal. Okay? And you can already see that this is different from a, from a variational problem. It's a little bit more involved. Okay? But in reality, that's how the... Uh, uh, I mean, the, the problems are in, 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 in optimal control. Optimal control problems are in reality. Um, you're trying to land on the moon with zero of, uh, velocity. From starting at some velocity, you want to land somewhere with a certain velocity. You want to know how much brake to apply and so forth. It's always, it's always an external variable in the sort of physical equations that you have to control so that you drive this to the desired you know outcome and you want to do this in some minimum fashion to minimize something like I don't know fuel or brakes or something you know or time sometimes time is you want to do it the fastest way possible so this is just one example. Uh, I assigned already the problems on the website for the homework due Friday. Um, so you, from now till Wednesday, you won't be able to solve them. But it's important that you kind of look and kind of understand. So study those problems. That is, you know, what's the control? Where is it? You know, just put it in the framework. What is little f? What is capital F? Think about it like that. And... Um, anyway, we'll talk about Wednesday how this is actually, you know, how do we solve these problems? Okay. And then you're going to feel very powerful and you're going <laughs> to go and. <laughs>